Okay, welcome to the next video in our series entitled Making You the Scientist. And today we're going to do a great lab activity that's called Sink or Swim. Everybody loves this activity because it's a challenge activity, so it's a competition. Your students will love it. You will love it because your students will be learning lots of new science skills, such as measurement, calculations, and estimation. For this activity, you need some simple materials. One of the things you need is a container that has water in it. You're going to need a balance. This is an electronic balance that I have at school, but you could also use a simple kitchen scale. You're going to need some cylindrical shapes. These are just simple cans that I have, or I have these film canisters. The most important thing is it has a cylindrical shape, and it's good if it's taller than it is wide. Also, you're going to need some sand and then a ruler for doing your measurements. The goal of this activity is to get this can to sit as low in the water as possible without sinking. You can see this can has no sand in it. It's empty. If I place it on the surface, then of course it floats. This can is full of sand. If I place it in the water, of course, it is going to sink. Now what you want to do is you want to put the right amount of sand in the can so the can will sit as low in the water as possible without sinking. I've added some sand to this can and you can see that this can sits nicely in the water, but it could go much deeper in the water without sinking. So the question is, how much sand should be added to that can so we'll sit as low in the water as possible without sinking? Before we talk about how much sand we're going to add to our can, we first have to talk about why something sinks or floats. Now here I have a metal cube, and what I ask my students is, if I take this metal cube and put it in the water, is it going to sink or float? And right away they know metal. If I put metal in water, it's going to sink. Now the question then becomes, why did that metal cube sink in that water? And usually somebody will say right away, because it's heavier than the water. And I'll say, really, that little metal cube is heavier than all of that water? And they'll look at me a little puzzled, and we'll talk about it for a moment, and usually somebody will come up with the idea of density. That's right, that metal cube sinks, not because it's heavier than the water, but because it's more dense than the water. If an object is more dense than the water, it will sink in the water. Now I have a wooden cube, and I'm going to put that in the water. I ask my students ahead of time, of course, what's going to happen to that. They know wood floats, and you can see that that floats on the surface of the water. Again, I ask them, why does that wood float on the water? Well, that wood floats on the water because it's less dense than the water. Water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. That metal cube has a density greater than one gram per cubic centimeter. That wooden cube has a density of less than one gram per cubic centimeter. Now we can talk about the can and how much sand we're going to add to the can so that the can will sit as low in the water as possible without sinking. Now before we talk about how much sand we're going to add, we have to really think about what do we want the density of this can to be after we've added the sand so it will sit as low in the water as possible. Do we want the density to be more than one? No, because I already showed you the density of water is one, and if you put something in that has a density greater than one, then it's going to sink to the bottom. So we know that we want the density of this can plus the sand to be less than one gram per cubic centimeter. But then how much less do we want it to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.9? Well, we want the density of this can plus the sand to be as close to one as possible without going over. If we make it more than one, then of course it's going to sink. Density is defined as the amount of mass per unit of volume. That's the grams of mass per cubic centimeter of volume. And the equation that we use to calculate density is the mass divided by the volume. Now, this can has a fixed volume. We cannot change the volume of this can, but we can change its mass to get the desired density by adding some materials such as sand to this can. That means the first thing we have to do is calculate the volume of the can. Then we can go on to calculate the desired mass to get the density that we would like to have. Now our product, which is available at our Teachers Pay Teacher store, the link is in the description below, contains a worksheet that will help your students and guide them through calculating the volume, choosing a desired density, and then calculating the mass needed to achieve that density. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. r is for the radius and h is for the height. Now the first thing we're going to measure is to get our radius. Now the easiest way to get the radius is to actually measure the diameter of the can. So the diameter of this can is 6.4 centimeters, so we'll write that down for our di diameter, 6.4 
centimeters. Now we know the radius is half of the diameter, so we'll divide that by two and we get 3.2 centimeters. Now the next thing we have to get, of course, is the height. So we're gonna measure the height of the can from top to bottom. And you can see the height of that can is just about seven centimeters. So we'll write down for the height, seven centimeters. Now we can simply plug our values into our equation, pi r squared, pi 3.14, and we have 3.2 centimeters. Make sure we square the centimeters, and then the height is seven centimeters. Now we can get our calculator and do all that in our calculator. Once again, pi is 3.14. That's gonna be times 3.2 squared. Don't forget to square the radius, times seven, and you get that the volume of that cylinder is 225 centimeters cubed. Earlier we decided that we want our can to have a density of 0.95 grams per centimeter cubed. And we said that the density equation, the equation for the density is the mass divided by the volume. So we need to figure out what mass is gonna give us a density of 0.95 grams per centimeter cubed. So we have to take our density equation and rearrange it, solve that equation for the mass. That means the mass is gonna be equal to the density times the volume. Now we decided earlier, we said that we want our density to be 0.95 grams per centimeter cubed, so we'll write that down. And then we just, we calculated earlier that the volume of that can, of that cylinder, is 225 centimeters cubed, so we'll write that down also. And then we simply need to multiply those two values together to figure out what mass will give us the density that we wanted, and that means that that mass is going to be 214 grams. So if we add enough sand to our can, do we have a total mass of 214 grams? Then we'll have a density of 0 0.95 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, now we have our balance, our can and our sand, and we're gonna take the can and place it on our balance, our scale, and then we're gonna add enough sand so that we come up to 214 grams and try and get it as close as possible to 214 grams. And there you go. That's 213.9. I think we'll go with that value. Okay, now we come to the big test. Is our can going to sink or is it going to sit nice and low in the water? Here's our can we have. We chose our can to have a density of 0.95. We didn't choose a number like 0 0.99 because we want to leave a little bit of room for human error. So here we go. Let's see how low it sits in the water and hopefully it's not going to sink. Okay, there you go. That looks pretty good. That's right up to the rim of that can. You can see we still have a little bit of room left, but that can is sitting very nicely, very low in that water. That looks wonderful. I hope you enjoyed our sink or swim activity. This is an activity that I do every year with my students. They really enjoy it because it's a challenge activity, and of course the students who get the can to sit as low in the water as possible win a prize. If you would like some more information about this activity, it is available at my Teachers Pay Teacher store. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos, click the notifications bell, give me a thumbs up, and of course, leave me a comment in the comment section below, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.